Okay, now hopefully I've, you've been keeping all the stuff that you're using for this tutorial in one folder. Now so far we've only had one page and that's the index.php file. But right now I want you to make two more files and that's a register.php and a connect.php. The connect.php I'll explain in a minute, but the register.php will basically be used for a new visitor to register for your website. Now on that page I've just made a simple HTML form that asks for their username, their email, a website, and a password, and ask them to retype password. Now, uh, I have to pay ta special attention to the names I give to these form. I'll show you the source code. For starters, I have the form action going to register.php. That's the same page, and I'll show you how to work with that, and really how to work with form data in general. You can have it go to a separate page if you'd like, but I find it easier to just send it to this. We have a text field called username. We have a text field called email, a text field called website, and a password field called password1, a password field called password2, and then we have an, a submit button named submit with a value of register. And that's our form. And this is, again, all HTML. There's no PHP involved here yet. But what we want to do is put at the top of this page, have the user register, and then if there's any problems with their registration, we can tell them on this same page. So let me show you how you do that. For starters, put some space at the top of your file so that you have room to work with the PHP. Now, we're going to be connecting to our database again for this. Now, you could just copy this over the MySQL Connect and MySQL Select DB. You can just copy that over from your index.php and put it on this file. However, if you have a, if, as your site gets larger and if you ever need to change any information, or if you have a separate password for testing on your computer or testing online, you're going to have to go through every one of those pages, pages and change this. So what we're going to do, and this is a much faster way, we're going to cut out these two lines and put them into connect.php. Now this connect.php doesn't have any HTML in it. This is PHP only. And that's, again, that's also valid. So if we can save that. But now we need to get that code into every page we want. And we can do that by a statement called require once. Now what this does is it adds the content of this connect.php and puts it in right here as if it were actually on that page. Now this can be very useful I found for just regular websites if you want to put a header as a require once then you can change one thing on the header and just not have to go through every page. So you, and once and what this function does as well is it if the page is not there it will just stop all the page rendering uh, basically it'll die uh, using that function and once means that if we accidentally include it somewhere later uh, that it won't throw an error if we do it without the once it will so just go with that and then we just pass the page name in dot here uh, connect dot php and now if we load that page up see everything still works fine there is no problems with the connection and now we can also add this into our register.php but instead we're going to put it above the header sorry if you can hear me type it's rattling against the microphone so now that we have connected on our register page we want to actually get the values of the form that the user submits and put them into the database in PHP, when you submit a form, and remember the method I'm using here is post, and if you're aware of HTML, the other method is get, where post will pass them into the next page but will not show them in the URL, while if you use get, it will show them in the URL. And those can have different uh, uses depending on what your site is, and we'll be using both of them later, but right now we're going to use post. And if you want to access a variable that has been posted to your page in PHP, you can use this variable, and it's called post. And it post is an array. So if we want to get, say, the value of username, it is post username, because username is the name of this text field right here. And we can do that for all of the fields in the form, including passwords. So first I want to find out, is did the user even submit the form? Because if they're just coming to this page the first time, they're obviously not going to submit it. So let's get the submit button. And remember, you have to name this submit in order for that to work. 
So we're going to use if they submitted it. So if we can get, or if they posted a submit value, then you can do all this code. If not, then just ignore everything. And now we're going to set variables based on that uh, code. So first we're going to have a variable called user, username. Post username. We're going to have a variable called email. I'm just going to type them all out now. Website. And I'm only going to do one for their password right now. So let's just put these all in. Now, as for actually assigning these variables, it doesn't matter if you put these outside of the if statement, um, but it's there's just no reason to because there wouldn't be any use of them. So now that we have all these variables, let's try, let's go back to phpMyAdmin and see how our users table is set up. And we can't browse it yet. Uh, we have a name, we have their password, um, we have an email, a site level joined and posts that reminds me of one other thing instead of just storing the password as plain text we're going to do a short encryption on it. and that's done by just putting SHA1 around the password this way if you ever have to log into phpMyAdmin you won't be able to see their password as a site owner and neither will any potential hackers and that just gives your visitors more peace of mind that it is secure so that you can't read their password if you know they use the same password for every site. So now let's put this into our table. Since we've already connected to our MySQL database with the connect.php up there, we're going to use MySQL query again, but instead of selecting, we're going to do insert. And you may have noticed that uh, in the SQL code when we put something into our database in the last video uh, for the posts, we're going to insert into users and be sure this is case sensitive I believe and the proper syntax of this is first in these in parentheses here we type in the values of what we want to insert um, or not the values the names so if we go back here we have name hash password you don't have to do these in order I'm just going to email Web, was it website or site? Uh, it was site. And joined. And I believe that's all of them. Because we're not going to do posts or level. Because those are filled in by default. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you have that. Your insert into users. And, you're okay, and it's okay if you want to make a line break here. I would almost recommend it. Just to make it a little easier for you to read. And now since we've put all these values in variables, we can access them in our MySQL query. Let's so put them in single quotes because we have the whole query in double quotes. Then you can use curly braces and just pass in a variable. And you can do that for your username, your password one. Oh, I forgot to put in curly braces. I'm sorry. Your email. your site and for joined we want to use that now function again and to do that we can just type now into our values close that parentheses put a semicolon close the statement close that parentheses then we're going to do the same thing or die mysql error so if there's any problem it will let us know now in a perfect world, if the user filled out everything correctly, this would work fine. This would make a new user for our table. Unfortunately, we have to put in protection against users that might try to register a name that's already been registered in, or an email that's already been registered. Or maybe they put a password in that's different. P password 1 is different than password 2. Or maybe they left something empty important like email or username. These are all things we need to check with before we put them into our database. So in our next video, I'm going to be talking about how to clean up the entries so that it will be more, there will be more error checking before we put stuff into a database.